So guys, the wait is finally over. We now have a brand new PlayStation 2 emulator that just launched in 2025, the next generation PS2 emulator called Arms X2. This isn't just any random emulator, it's built completely on open source code, directly inspired by the legendary PCSX2 for Windows, but now perfectly adapted for Android. See, you all know that EtherSX2, the first proper PS2 emulator for Android, got discontinued a while ago, and after that, the PS2 emulation seen on mobile kind of went quiet. But as new Android devices came out, from the latest Poco series to modern Snapdragon and Mali-based phones, the old emulator just couldn't keep up anymore. Players started facing weird graphics glitches, frame drops, and performance issues. That's where ARMS X2 changes everything. It's built for the new generation of Android devices, fully optimized for the latest chipsets, and offers a smoother experience than ever before even better than EtherSX2 in many cases. Now let's get started. The first step is simple, head over to the official website of Arms X2, where you can and install the app. Once installed, you'll see a clean and modern welcome screen that immediately asks you to select your PS2 BIOS file. Just choose the correct BIOS from your storage. After that, the emulator will automatically create its own dedicated directory, where it stores all your configurations, game data, and cache files. You can also manually select your own PS2 folder in internal storage, just make sure all your BIOS and game files are backed up there. This is super important because even if you uninstall the emulator later, your data remains safe and ready to use the next time you reinstall it. And that's just the beginning. The new UI design gives a much smoother, more modern experience, clean, responsive, and far more refined than EtherSX2 ever was. After granting the required permission, the emulator will now ask you to choose your game folder. Simply select the folder where all your PS2 games are stored. Once that's done, your game list will appear right on the screen, but you'll notice something missing. The games are visible, yet their covers aren't showing. Don't worry, it's an easy fix. Just open Google and search for PS2 cover link GitHub. You'll find a GitHub page that provides all the official cover URLs. Copy that link. Go back to the emulator and paste it in the cover URL section. Within seconds, all your PS2 games will start showing beautiful, high-quality covers, making your library look complete and premium. Now, with just a single tap on any game, you can launch it instantly. But before we jump into gameplay, let's take a quick tour and review what's actually inside this emulator. Because ARMS X2 isn't just about running games, it's packed with features. On the left-hand side, you'll notice a detailed settings panel. Tap on settings, and under the general section, you'll find options like full screen UI mode, frame limiter, and even custom FPS control, which allows you to manually tweak your frame rate for smoother gameplay. You can also adjust the aspect ratio to match your screen, whether you prefer the original 4 to 3 PS2 look or full 16 to 9 widescreen gaming. If you love an immersive experience, switch it to full screen for that true console feel. There's also a fast boot option, which skips the PS2 startup animation to load games faster perfect for quick testing or switching between titles. Additionally, you can adjust brightness, and even change the timeout duration for on-screen controls, meaning your touch buttons will fade away after a certain time to give you a clean, uncluttered display while gaming. Every single option here feels well thought out, giving players the freedom to customize the emulator exactly how they want. Now, let's dive into the most important part, the graphics settings. As soon as you open this section, the first option you'll see is the renderer. By default, it's usually set to OpenGL, which works quite fast on most devices. However, keep in mind that on some phones, especially those with Mali GPUs, OpenGL might cause graphic glitches or flickering textures. So in that case, switch to Vulkan Renderer. Vulkan is much more stable, smoother, and optimized for modern and red hardware. It not only fixes most of the graphic bugs, but also gives you a nice boost in overall performance. And just a heads up, avoid software mode, because that one is extremely slow and only meant for testing or debugging not for actual gameplay. Right below that, you'll find the upscale option. This is where you can tweak your internal resolution. If you're using a high-end device, go ahead and set it to 2x or 3x upscale for sharper visuals and smoother edges. But if your phone is mid-range or budget level, it's better to keep it at default 1x for stable performance and no lag. You'll also notice a bunch of other advanced graphics tweaks, but let's focus on what really matters. Scroll down until you see blending accuracy. Set this to minimum, doing so can give you a noticeable FPS boost without affecting the graphics too much. The rest of the settings can stay on default, no need to change everything unless you know exactly what you're doing. Moving further down, you'll spot an option called Sharpen. This lets you add a bit of extra clarity to your visuals. You can tweak it slightly depending on your preference, just don't overdo it or it might create unwanted artifacts. Now, on the top tabs, switch to the performance section. 
connection. These settings are already well optimized, so it's best to leave them at default. However, if you want to monitor how well your game is running, you can enable the FPS counter to display your frame rate directly on screen while playing. Finally, scroll down and look for the fast DDD option. Enabling this will significantly reduce game loading times, helping your titles boot much faster. With just these few tweaks, the emulator will run buttery smooth, giving you a near console level PS2 experience right on your Android phone. Now let's move to the controller tab, which is right on the top. Right below that, you'll find the controller mapping section. This feature allows you to map external gamepads or Bluetooth controllers to your preferred layout. Whether you're using your PS4 effects box or any third-party controller, you can assign every button exactly where you want it, no delay, no confusion. And if you love realistic gameplay feedback, scroll down to the vibration option and turn it on. This enables haptic feedback, giving you that satisfying vibration effect whenever something intense happens in game. On the side panel, there's also a customize option. From here, you can actually change the overall interface style of the emulator. Right now, there's only one default UI theme available, but the developers have confirmed that more visual styles will be added in future updates. So that's something exciting to look forward to. Next, under the storage section, you can manage all your important emulator files, including your PS2 memory card data. You can easily import or export memory cards, which is extremely useful if you want to back up your game saves or move them between devices. And finally, there's an account option at the bottom. If you sign in here, you'll be able to sync your settings and configurations to the cloud. So even if you reinstall the app later, your setup will stay exactly the same. Now it's time for the real test. Let's run a game and see how this emulator performs in action. The moment you start the game, you'll see the new on-screen button layout. And honestly, it looks sleek and modern, far better organized than older emulators. The app even supports portrait mode, so you can play comfortably no matter how you hold your phone. The gameplay runs at full speed, and right in the center of the screen, you'll notice a small keyboard style icon. This opens a quick settings overlay while your game is still running. From here, you can rescale your controller UI, change the renderer in real time, or even save and load your game states instantly. You can also enable cheats directly or manage texture settings from the same menu. Everything you need is accessible from the side panel without ever leaving the gameplay screen. However, keep in mind that making heavy adjustments while the game is running isn't recommended, as it might cause a short freeze or crash. And with that, our Full Arms X2 PS2 emulator setup and review is complete. This emulator feels fresh, powerful, and packed with potential. If you liked my effort and found this guide helpful, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends. It really motivates me to keep creating more in-depth content like this, because trust me, Making videos like these takes an entire day of testing, scripting, and editing. So, stay tuned, more exciting emulator content is coming your way soon.